Bubbles and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the naked eye. And the sun is shining down on the belly. Hope to be for life is to the day that I die. Some folks like horses, cats or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. are plenty, mayflies courting on fragrant breeze. Sweet wax wings come down from the heavens and wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better. If he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. Hey folks, how you doing? My name's Kurt Nelson. I'm standing here on the Beaverkill River with my good friend Mary Peterson. And we've got caddisflies coming off the water. It's uh, April 25th, I believe. So it's kind of late April. Beautiful sunny day. The water is getting up there in temperature, probably close to 50, maybe. Um, but we've got a really good hatch going on here. And what we're doing is we're near Horton Brook which is right up here. It feeds into here. And I've caught some nice fish in here before. Mary's got a lot. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm gonna be talking about some nymphing techniques here. And uh, if she gets on the hook there. Oh. oh well, she's, she's hooked up. What I'm using is a big stonefly nymph. And I'm casting out, letting it drift free down through the current and then at the end, I kind of lift it slowly. That's a, a basic technique for any kind of uh, uh, a nymph. And we've got a nice little current here. Uh, I've caught many fish here right behind this little, little eddy out here. And I'll get my stonefly out. And we'll keep that line at a 90 degree angle when it's in the water. Ooh, thought I had a bite. Well, that's good. You want to be bouncing off the rocks. Uh, Mary just said that there's a lot of rocks here and you got to be careful, but that's, that's where the fish are hiding behind. Let's try out in the farther eddy there. 
and nothing on the giant stonefly here. But we, we have seen a lot of stoneflies come off. There's a lot of caddis in the air, but well, most of them are, are caddis. But there's uh, size 18. There's one, there's a bunch flying right around me, landing on me. So uh, I'm hoping later today we can use a dry fly and pick up some uh, fish on a caddis fly when we move farther upstream. Now what's, what Mary is using is a beads head hair's ear nymph strike indicator. There we go. This is a strike indicator on here and she lost her fly. So we're going to have to put on another fly and uh, what I'll do is I'll have her use my fly rod and uh, try to cast this giant stone fly and uh, yes. There you go. I got to put another fly on yours. So there she goes. So I'm going to tie another fly on and Mary's going to keep casting. And there's a lot of little caddis hutches all around here. And uh, and what we'll have to do is uh, I'll have to get a close up of some of these in the water just to show you what they look like. I got another beads, beads head right here. If I can get it out of my, uh, out of my vest. Use my hemostats. There we go. That one's kind of beat. But well, most of work, it still has leader material on it. So, I'm going to try to tie this one on. And then I'll be casting. Seven, eight, nine, ten for good measure. And then back through the loop. And there we go. We're tied on. So I'll use this rod for a little while. I'll just fish down below, Mary. And I'll take my glasses off. Last year I caught a bunch of fish right here. And we're going to cast and keep that line at a 90 degree angle. And then when it gets to the bottom, lift slowly. That's when the fish will hit it. And by keeping that line at a 90 degree angle, what happens is you basically set the hook because with the line tight, as soon as a fish tugs on it, it the rod automatically sets the hook pretty much. So it's a, it's a good, good thing to remember whenever you're nymphing. Cast upstream, keep the line tight. As it comes by you, drop the rod a little bit, let a little line out, but keep that line tight. And it gets down to the bottom, lift slowly, cast, keep that line tight, try not to have too much of a belly, and then sometimes you can even shake and jerk it when you're lifting it. This is usually a pretty good spot. If we don't get any fish here, we're, we're going to head upstream. Let me do a long cast, get way out there. Get farther out. Drop the rod as it goes by. Let that line go down farther. Try to watch that strike indicator. Nope. 
and let that line go down. And it gets down to the end. We're going to lift it slowly. Nothing. Oh, look at the caddisflies flying around. Well, I would love to see a fish hit the surface for one of them because I would tie on a caddisfly in a heartbeat and I'd love to catch trout on a dry fly. That's what I love to do more than anything with all these caddisflies. I think that's what we should be looking towards in the next hour or two. We should see some fish hit the surface. Because it is kind of late. It's like almost quarter to one in the afternoon. And uh, it's a very pleasant day. So right now is when they would be uh, pretty much hitting. Most pleasant time of the day. And actually the whole day's been pleasant. And we haven't caught any fish yet. We've been working nymphs all over the place. A couple of different places already. And we haven't had a nibble. So sometimes it makes you wonder if there's any fish in here at all, but I know there is. And I'm gonna keep casting out here in this little eddy right out here. And keep working that. Keep that line tight. Lift the rod, get rid of that belly, let the line go down. Gets to the bottom, lift. Cast way out. Let's see what happens here. Farther out in that little pool. Let the line go down, mend a little bit. That's letting some line out. And strip it in. Now let some line out. Nothing. head upstream and uh, see, if, see if we can't pick up a few fish uh, up on the Willow Wee Mine. One more cast. Always time for one more cast. Lift. Lift. Well, I would think they'd be all over that hare's ear nymph just because it's the same color and size as some of these uh, caddisflies that are coming. So it kind of imitates an emerger when you lift it. An emerging caddis. Because these caddis go from the bottom of the stream to the surface very fast. So the trout have to really be quick. If they want to have something to eat, they're going to have to go really quick to get these caddis. But they, the fortunate thing for the trout is these caddis do hatch in great numbers. So there's probably a lot of nymphs crawling around on the bottom at this time. When you see this many bugs in the air, there's got to be at least three times that active on the bottom. I don't know if that's scientific or not, but it uh, pretty much holds true from my experience. There's a lot of bugs in the air, there's a lot of bugs under the water in a greater number, greater proportion. The ones you see in the air are only part of the, the number of insects. Well, we're going to wrap it up. That's my last cast. No nibbles here. Uh, last year the water was about a foot higher here, so it could be because of different water conditions, who knows. But uh, we're going to move upstream up near Roscoe and see what happens.
Ready? Well, I just got back today from uh, the Al Hazard Chapter Riverbank cleanup. We had a real good time. We had about 30 people down there. And uh, we picked up a dump, dump truck full of uh, garbage. I didn't get a chance to really take a lot of video footage today because it was raining most of the time and I didn't want to ruin my camera. Uh, but I did get a chance to shoot some video and uh, I'll show you that and it may be on the screen right now. But uh, we had a really good time. Uh, we met at about 9 o'clock at Deposit Fireman's Park and then we uh, proceeded to clean up different sections there. We had coffee and donuts that was brought by the Shenango Valley chapter of Trout Unlimited and we thanked them. And uh, then we uh, went around and cleaned up different sections of the river and what was amazing was this is the third year or fourth year I think we've done it is we're finding less garbage each year. So this year we only got one dump truck and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing that we only got one dump truck. It's actually a good thing. It means that we're having an impact on the ecosystem in that area. Uh, people are seeing it cleaner so it's l there's less of a chance that they're going to throw garbage out there. I call it the Arlo Guthrie syndrome. Remember Alice's restaurant where they uh, threw a pile of garbage out onto another pile of garbage and then they were arrested for and had actually had to clean up the whole pile. So uh, that's the Arlo Guthrie syndrome. If there's a pile of garbage it takes no uh, time at all to think about what you're doing. You just throw more garbage on it. So if it's clean there's a, it's less likely that somebody's gonna throw litter out. So if you keep your yard clean or your, your forest near you or your stream near you clean, there's less chance that other people will throw garbage there. So anyway, we had a good time at the riverbank cleanup and uh, we had a barbecue afterwards actually. We, we, after we cleaned up different parts of the river, we came back and then we uh, um, had a uh, barbecue. Well, um, I think that's about it for me today. I'm going to show you another uh, uh, clip of the Kids Derby because I'm trying to push that a little bit because it's coming up very soon on May 10th. It's a Saturday. It starts about 10 and goes till 2 and we'll have raffled prizes all through the day. All kinds of goodies. Uh, probably a, at least a, a raffle every 15 minutes and we're hoping to have it every 5 minutes. So that's a pretty busy day for raffle callers out. So we're going to see what we can do on that and uh, uh, for having as many raffles as possible. But uh, come on out. It's only a dollar per person. There's no park fees. It's at Shenango Valley State Park and that's May 10th from 10 till 2. You, uh, registration starts at 9 so if you come in there you can, you can come at 9 or even earlier and we'll let you through. But uh, that also has a lunch included. Uh, we're going to have hot dogs and I think we have some hamburgers left over that we might uh, pull out uh, from the from the cleanup that we had today. We had some hamburgers left over at the barbecue. So anyway, uh, we hope to see you on May 10th. And again, here's the 2002 Kids Derby. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Got some big ones. Wow. Last year we were out here with t-shirts and shorts. You catch any? One. 
How big? It's down there. He kept it on the stringer. You guys catch any? No. Not yet? No. They're out there. You're trying hard? Yeah. And where are they? Uh huh. <laughs> well, at least it stopped raining, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck, guys. Did you get a hot dog? Yeah. yeah. How was it? Good. But we got two. It was better than the fishing, right? Yeah. Tell them what you hope to catch. Okay. I'm gonna catch a bass. Why you want to catch a bass? And then he got away. Let's go. Look at that. What in the world? Oh my gosh. Look at that. I suck. Dude, he got one for the game. I have two worms out. How many pounder is that? I don't know. That looks like a three pounder. Two pounds? That's a beauty. That's a big one. Wow. You gotta get your line out and catch another one. Oh, uh, Dad, where's our oh. bucket? Yeah, your dad. I got something. It's a bass. Yeah. Right. Get it. Oh, dude, you got it. Dude, you can't eat it. it. You can't Woo. eat it, though. Get, get Mr. Kazaki. You can, you can put that in the fish tank. No, I can't. But he can't keep it. Where is it? It's a bass. Bass. Oh. Pretty so good. Keep, put it up in here a little bit higher this time. Not bad. Not bad. Now just keep and then keep it falling about that angle or leave that. Well, Christopher, do you just go down? Uh, I think it's the waves, Mom. Having fun? Um, not likely. Not likely. <laughs> you have no fun. <laughs> Is that legal or? No. We didn't catch. We didn't fish before. He walked out and put it in his hands. He got it. Okay. okay.
Here's what you do. Supposedly you try really this. Well, they like, got really thin mouths from what I've heard. You got your spinning rod. And I will mm -hmm. uh, clear car line down there at Ferryville. That far yeah, up from the hook. Right again, mm -hmm. gonna you put a bobber. It's something I always want to try to do. You put fly yeah, there. Yeah, they're tough to catch. The best yeah, thing to use for a lot of shit darts. And you have a hook between the fly and the bobber. Throw the, throw it out. And then you just make the bobber bounce. And that will make the bobber go like this. I was going to get out there and do that. Wrapping up the show today, uh, what we what we did today was do some nymphing, and we're on the Willow Weemock now, uh, just below the museum, uh, above Roscoe, New York. But what we did was we tried some beadhead hare's ear nymph and some stoneflies, and uh, even tried some floating caddisflies since there were caddis out on the on the river. Uh, what we found was that they weren't rising to the surface, and we only got a couple of looksies here and there on our nymphs, so things are pretty slow down here in the Catskills. So if you're heading out, uh, this may not be the place to be at this time of the year right now. But it is a gorgeous day, and a bad day of fishing is always better than a good day at work. So uh, I recommend getting out. Now we've we've uh, tried nymphs on uh, a couple of different stretches of the the beaver kill, and. All the worked our way all the way up here to the Willow Weemock by the museum. We did see a couple of layer, large fish uh, near the museum, but we just watched them for a while, and then, then we meandered on back down here. Uh, it was a long day, you know. We didn't catch any fish, unfortunately. That's the way fishing is sometimes. Uh, but it, but again, it's it was still a gorgeous day. A lot of caddis out, and. Uh, Hopefully on a future show we'll get we'll catch more fish and uh, we'll we'll get them on the air. But for today I'm I'm just going to say uh, so long and farewell until next week. Uh, Kurt Nelson for Riffles and Waves, and we'll see you soon. Us fishing down on the Beaver Kill just about a week ago. The fish started jumping, the fish started rising right in front of me, you know. So I tied on Kurt's killer stone flies and cast it out onto the stream. Soon after that, a trout took the fly and we were both headed downstream. Won't you give me three steps? Give me three steps, fish. You give me three steps more. You give me three steps. I'm running out of line and I won't. The trout turned around and headed upstream. He jumped in the air and spit the fly out. This is what he said to me.